Hello everyone and thank you so much for stopping by. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have a flocked panda rainbow birthday card to share with you. So let's jump right in. So right here I'm going to show you how to use the flocking material. I have the deco foil uh, flocked transfer sheets. I have it both in white and in black to make the panda and I like to use double-sided tape. I found this to be the easiest way to make the flocked panda or any of the storybook characters from Simon Says Stamp. That is where the panda came from. And I just have scrap pieces of paper there. There's scrap pieces of cardstock, sorry. Uh, you can see on the back there's a flower on it. I was trying to do some stuff, but it didn't quite work. So instead of wasting the paper, I just flipped it over and I'm going to use it to do the flocked panda. So I've laid this double-sided tape down. And then you're going to see here in a second, I'm going to remove the backing sheet to it. And then I will cut down the flocking sheet to fit to the cardstock size that I have there. And then I'm going to remove the backing and then I'm going to take the flocking sheet and stick it flock side down on top of the double-sided tape. You can see here I, I had to use the, the craft pick to get the stickers off because I'm so bad at that. I don't know why I struggle so hard. It's probably my nails, I guess. But So you're gonna see you're gonna st stick the flock side down onto the double-sided tape on both the white and the black. And then I put it through my Gemini Go machine. You need to press that flock really well into that double-sided tape because you're going to remove the backing sheet of the flock. So right now you can see that the, that's the top layer and I'm going to stick it in my Gemini Go with just the two plastic sheets. And there's the panda die. This is the scrap, no sorry, this is the Simon Says Stamp picture book panda wafer die. So I had to look there to make sure I was saying it right. And you can see here I've removed the backing sheet to the black flock and now I'm going to do the white flock. And that's how you, you take the flock from the transfer sheet onto a piece of cardstock. So now I'm going to put that through my Gemini Go just to cut out the panda. And then I'm going to take out the pieces. So here you can see it right here. And you do need that uh, craft pick to get all the pieces separate because it cuts out every single piece. So you can do different colored bears if you wanted. It doesn't have to be a panda. I'm sure you could do any kind of bear, although it is a panda. Uh, and then I'm going to do that in both the white and the black so that I can put the panda together. And it does take me a minute to get it all out. Uh, I struggle a little bit with the uh, some dies for some reason. I struggle to get the pieces out because they cut so well. And Simon says stamps dies are one of the ones that cut really well. So, I mean, that's great because you want your die to cut through. Nothing's more irritating that you have to run it through six or seven times to get it to go. Although, I'll be honest with you, the Gemini Go is amazing. It sits on my desk because I don't have a lot of desk space. And it's just the smaller version of the Gemini Junior, or the Gemini, the regular machine. And here I'm going to use liquid glue to stick my panda together. And you can see that I have now another scrap piece of cardstock. Because all the pieces are separate, you have to kind of put them together onto something. You could use your card base or however you want to do that, but... I wanted to put them on an action wobbler, so I had to put them on something else to hold them all together. And now you're going to see here one of my kittens come in, that's Shade. Uh, we adopted him back in September, and he's going to help me with the, all the gluing of the panda here. So you can see I'm taking every piece and I'm using my reversible tweezers. Just I find that way easier when I'm using little pieces, especially since I have longer fingernails. I find it easier for me to handle all of the little pieces if I do that. And I did, honestly. <laughs> I had to look up online um, how to put this together because I couldn't remember what pieces of the panda were white and what pieces of the panda were black. So every time, I don't know if you can see me, but I look up and I pause for a few seconds because I'm looking at my computer to make sure that I'm putting my panda together properly. <sighs> what do you do, hey? <laughs> I couldn't remember what it looked like. Oh boy. And then I'm going to add in here, I'm going to add in the ears. And I added even this really small point, the little eyeballs. I even put those in on the panda bear. And then when I get to the nose, I chose to make it pink. So I took my RV11 Copic marker and I just covered on top of the white felt. I, it didn't hurt my nib. It didn't do anything to damage my marker at all. And the felt, then I had a pink piece of felt instead of cutting out the panda again just for that one piece. I chose to use my Copic marker to color in the nose. And then I'm going to glue that down as well. 
So yeah, I just, I kind of wanted a little bit of color on the panda. I know pandas are black and white and you could of course leave the nose black or, or white if you chose, but I just thought pink was pretty cute. So here you can see that I'm going to cut down my panel. So my panel is going to be five and a quarter by four. And that's, I'm going to put this on top of a car, an A2 sized card base, which of course is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm also going to mat my panel. So my black piece that I'm cutting right here is going to be five and three eighths by four and one eighth. So it's going to leave just a little one eighth border around my finished panel. So after that, I took some Inka Dinka Do masking paper and the We Are Memory Keeper nested circles. There's 20 circles in that set. I have the 12th circle and I'm going to cut out a mask for my ink blending. So I put that through my, my regular, my big shot machine because I don't own a bigger die cutting machine. And then I lined that up on my base. You're going to see here, I'm going to get my head in the way. I'm sorry. I didn't realize my head was in the way and it didn't work anyway. So I ended up managing to stick it down. No problem without my head in the way. So, you know, how do, what do you do when you're trying to film? <laughs> it's, it's an adventure. So then I press down really hard along the circle edge because I'm going to do a rainbow blended background with my distress inks. So for my distress inks, I have squeeze lemonade, Wilted Violet, Twisted Citron, Picked Raspberry, Spiced Marmalade, and Mermaid Lagoon. Those are going to be my six colors to create my rainbow. And I'm going to just go around them, um, overlapping each color to kind of get an in-between color between each lay of color. And I just keep going back and forth until I have the color exactly what I want it to be. And I, you can see I, <laughs> I love the mini cubes. I have um, all of the mini cubes for the Distress Inks. I don't own any big... Uh, the full-sized pads for that <clears throat> because you can store the foam underneath the ink. I love that. I'm always struggling a little bit for storage in my craft space. My craft space is actually, uh, we repurposed our dining room to be my little, my office. And uh, so I'm struggling for space. So it's just wonderful to be able to put those foams underneath the inks. And then they're always with whichever color. And I have one of each. Uh, for each color and then I have these are all six of my blending tools I have six and uh, it's just wonderful to keep the foams there and then just work them back and forth I'm trying to find a really good storage solution for my foams for my distress oxides because of course they don't come in minis they can't because of the formula that they are but I'm trying to find a way to store those in a really easy, easy way. And I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm working on it. So <clears throat> I just love that these go underneath the foams there. The foams go underneath the inks, sorry. So I'm just going to blend them back through. And I went over them twice, each color, just to create the best blend that I could. I chose Distress Inks for this because I wanted a really vibrant color. And I find the oxides are a bit more milky. So they don't quite, a bit chalkier maybe. Um... So they don't quite give you the same vibrancy, although they would also be stunning in this card. I just rarely use my Distress inks, and I really wanted to use them. So that's what I did for this rainbow background. <clears throat> so once the blending is all done, I'm going to lift up my mask, and there you can see that it did a perfect circle. So here I'm just going to stamp my greeting on the front. You can also see that I did take my mini snips, my Tim Holtz mini snips, the five inch ones, and I actually cut out my panda around on that piece of paper. It was really easy to fussy cut that out. So I use the grid on my mini Misty to make sure that my sentiment is lined up straight. And I'm just going to put it down here in the corner and I lightly touched it to the paper because it's such delicate writing. If you push too hard, the letters like fan out and then it, you don't get a crisp, like a crisp um, sentiment. So I just like lightly touched it to my paper and I used uh, Claire, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink for that. And so here I'm just going to glue my panel down onto my black mat. And then I'm pretty sure I'm going to stamp the inside of my card. Yeah, I'm going to. I don't do that as often as I think I should. I like doing the inside. I just honestly, I usually forget to do it when I'm making the card. So I end up doing it later and it's a lot more difficult to put in a stamping platform once there's things on top of it. So I only own the mini Misty. I'm actually hoping here when the new Misty comes out, uh, the revamped version, I want to buy the original size that would fit the whole card base in it. But I only have the mini Misty. And I saw so that's what I'm using. So I lined up my stamps and then you can see here the grid on the door. I always make sure that they're straight to that because I find that's the easiest way to make sure that they're straight. 
And for this, I'm going to use Wilted Violet Oxide Ink because I love how it stamps. Oxide inks stamp beautifully. Sadly, Distress inks don't stamp as nicely. Um, it's just the formula that they're made. They don't stamp well. Uh, you can use them to stamp, and if you didn't mind that it wasn't quite as crisp, you could absolutely use those to stamp. I have. But for sentiments and stuff, I like to use an ink that I know is going to stamp beautifully. So then I'm just going to glue my panel down to my card base after I've stamped inside. And then here I'm going to play with the action wobbler a bit. I actually put the action wobbler on backwards. And you're going to see that it's like I, I have I lifted off the card base a few times because it didn't stick down because I put it on backwards. So when you take the mini action wobbler, make sure that the clear side is what you're sticking down to your card base so that you can't really see it. I didn't know that, so I put them on backwards. And then here I'm going to take some sequins and add them to the background. I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Assorted Moonstone Sequins. They're stunning. They're just a beautiful silver shimmer and they're just really pretty. So I'm going to lay I think about seven across. I, I always do an uneven number. You're going to see me kind of play with them a little bit until I like the placement of where they are. But I am going to put them on an angle across the card. I think that it just looks really pretty with all the rainbow background and I like how it pulls your eye kind of everything's focused to the panda and then you kind of just get a little bit of extra around it and I think that just it looked really pretty and yeah so that's my card for today guys it's pretty straightforward I think I I hope that this is something you might try um, you could absolutely bend that blend that background with any inks you want there's so many inks that you could use for this I just thought that the distress inks really created a beautiful vibrant color and that's what I own I actually don't own many inks I have uh, the distress inks and the oxides and that's kind of it so I'm kind of looking to invest in some inks and just haven't decided what brand I want to go to yet so we'll have to see what I end up deciding on but there's so many beautiful inks out there by so many companies that I'm not sure who I'm gonna go with yet but we'll see. So after I liked how I lined them up, I glued them down with my Gina Connect glue, beautiful liquid glue, just so I could shift them around a little if I needed to. And that's everything. That's the whole card today, guys. If you liked this video, I would love to have you back. I post a new video every Monday, and I'd love to have you come back and subscribe if you'd like to. I, I I would love to have you and if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment or a like that would be amazing too. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you're all staying safe. Bye bye for now.